All right, all right, everyone out of the way. This is a medical emergency. I think we have now, okay, we have saved the life of this crane, but that means, lady, you need to turn it like right around. Oh my gosh. Okay, we have our vets just like frantically running to and fro. There is an animal that we have who is like critically sick. It's one of our female capybara that we just added in. I know, I know there's a lot of sick animals. Oh my gosh, why is the caiman sick? You guys, I cannot believe how quickly this is all descending into chaos. I turn around for one minute trying to get this place nice and spiffy. Literally, that was my goal. Make it nice and spiffy for my husband so that we could turn around and we could go ahead and, and have a wonderful romantic time managing all of these beautiful zoos together. And the next thing you know, like all of my animals are sick and dying because I didn't pay attention to if I had like proper protection for their waterways oh my goodness all right well let's hurry and let's actually just put down a we don't need a transformer i need a water where is something not this whole starter staff facility please i just need something for water uh all right there's the water hut okay we're just gonna put down my african water hut and tuck it over here it is not exactly the right theme but i'm hoping that is going to there we go that is going to start getting our water cleaner is all the other water clean all of the other water is clean okay thank goodness oh my gosh all right you guys well welcome welcome back to our wetlands and you know funny that you actually need to keep the water of your wetlands clean oh you know what I'm, I'm gonna pretend this isn't my fault and we had some sort of like terrible spill there was probably some sort of um of like agricultural runoff or there was some sort of awful factory just dumping its waste into the waterways up up river and that actually happens a lot where chips and i used to live in michigan uh suddenly the river that we lived next to which had been very pretty started filling up and it started looking kind of like this but then add a bunch of really nasty foam on top and that's actually pfast foam that causes like cancer a lot of very bad cancers and everyone was so confused and it turns out there was a fire extinguisher factory up the river and they had just managed to pass a like lobbyist bill that allowed them to dump the chemicals just straight into the river and it would downstream and poisoned like everything you couldn't swim in it you couldn't fish out of it you couldn't let your dogs go in it and what was scary was that was the same water that chips and i actually got into our house like they put it through no no! A water treatment facility has failed! <laughs> Mechanic urgently requested! Urgently requested! <laughs> But they put that water through a water treatment facility and said that it was safe to drink. But if you looked into the science behind the levels that the water treatment facility said was safe, and then the levels that were still in the water, and then like what scientists said was safe, it was not safe to drink. And we had to buy a water purifier for our house so that we too did not start like dying of cancers that were very, very bad in this water. So I'm going to say that this is like some sort of external factor and not my fault even though it was my fault <clears throat> diego okay thank goodness diego is no longer sick i think we're slowly but surely working our way through we're waiting we're working on the buffalo come on come on all right it looks like uh the buffalo is now no longer sick yes okay so he is now good to go and then that buffalo's off now sarah is coming on in hang in there my dear i'm so sorry i am so sorry can i add more light into this room i actually never thought about that i always just thought like oh the facility sometimes can be really dark and it's hard to see but i never thought to like come in and potentially just like add more lights for myself so i wonder if i can do that and then see like what's going on can I do that? Because that would be the kind of like micro level building stuff that would be really fun for me, I suppose. No, no, let me, let me in. I want this. Can I just turn this? I wonder. Wow, I actually think that did make the room like a teensy bit brighter. I never thought to do that, you guys. Oh my gosh, and now we have a sick crane. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> this is just really sad. This is really sad. But at least our animal welfare is getting up as we slowly but surely, like, rescue all of our animals. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is very alarming. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. So hopefully... Okay. Crane? I think rescued. I think we're working our way through everything. We're now down to just a few animals that we can kind of pinpoint. But the moral of the story is, as I told you guys, like you really- Sarah, you're alive! Oh, thank goodness. You really have to be careful about what goes into the waterways, and you would be shocked at how sneaky and casual it is for the laws that are supposed to protect your water on local levels to get completely overturned because only like an average of 10 people will show up to like the very small scale local town hall meetings that actually end up deciding if we're going to let the fire like extinguisher factory dump like cancer causing foam into our river or not. Like only 10 people will show up because people just don't know what's happening. And then you turn around and like, it's just sad all around. That's what I'm saying. That's why you really have to like, look at things on a local scale and just not trust like that somebody else will handle the problem. Cause it like, if five people showed up, just like you and like your, your family and like your buddy and you're like, yo, I don't want you dumping chemical, like cancer causing chemicals in our water. Then you would be half the group. You would almost be the majority of the people. So anyway, there's my little story. It's very important. That's why Chips and I are kind of big on like trying to put in water purifiers where we live now. Uh, and that being said, okay. I think slowly but surely we are working our way through curing all of the animals. And I don't think what they have is actually contagious. It's just based on if the water was dirty or not. There goes another one. Yeah. So we're going to let the animals slowly and surely be taken care of. And meanwhile, it looks like a lot of the crowds from our guests have actually eased up on congestion now that we have this new path over here. But if we're going to put our guest over on this side, I want to make sure that they also have ways to become comfortable. I think we're fairly secure-ish on our money at the moment. So we need to find other ways to make sure that the guests are happy, that they're well educated. So let's actually grab this. And we'll put in a few education stations to make sure that people are learning what they can. We're going to learn about the capybara because I adore the capybara. There we go. And then just a little bit down the way, but careful not to overlap with some of the spots. We'll put the red crown crane. All those new animals that I'm still super excited about. And there we go. And then we have the Nile Lechwe, so I might as well just go ahead and grab like, you know what, I could have, probably just copy pasted a bunch of these things. Oh, these are both Nile Lechwe. All right, let's go ahead and change this to Capybara. And it looks like we actually don't know very much about the Capybara, so it might behoove us to go ahead and, let's see, it might really be good for us to go ahead and try to get our vets researching when we can. <laughs> but right now the vets are kind of like a little busy, so I'm not gonna bug them. All right, so we've got some education, some education, started over here. We do have the Galapagos tortoise. And then we've also got the tapir. Oh, maybe we should get our tapir, like a tapir friend, like a girlfriend. That might be a really good idea because we have a male to tapir. So what if we come in and then I'm pretty sure it's a bard's tapir. Let's double check. I forgot that we had two types of tapir right now. Yeah, it's the bards to appear. So I think we can go ahead and adopt ourselves this lovely female right here as a custom seizure. And then we're going to double check to make sure that we had a male. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we had a male to appear, but no, we had a female to appear. All right. Well, now we're going to have two female to appear, but now I should probably check the Zoopedia. So actually the group size is one to one and I have just got us too many to appear. Whoops. I wonder if I can put the tapir in with the lemur. The problem with the lemurs is that I cannot add any water because I cannot edit the terrain. So, huh. 
but I think the lemurs can actually coexist with a whole bunch of different species. So let's actually take a little peek sees at their interspecies. They could exist with a bunch of other lemurs, so we might consider doing that and adding them more trees soon. However, it's really the guests I should be focusing on, and it looks like the guests- Oh, it's messy over here! You guys! It looks like the guests are getting pretty thirsty still, so let's actually try maybe one or two points where I could have- In fact, let's come over here. And then- whoops. I can't believe- I can't believe I added too many up here! But it looks like she's okay with that, so I'm just gonna leave her be. She has an injury, but our vets will take care of it. They're- I really should give them a raise if it's not going to, like, bankrupt us. And speaking of, like, our lemurs, let's actually have... Like I said, this little section over here, where people can come over. And since there's so many people, mechanic research is complete. Yay! All right, we've just researched literally all of the drink stands. So let's come in and we're going to have our mechanics start researching the food shops because I think those things will make our guests super duper happy. I think Missy Good, which is like the, the vegan donuts, om nom nom nom, the Mexilante and the fries are up next. So let's see, we're gonna come in and hello guest. How are all of you today? I do hope that you will, you will, well maybe here's not the place to go ahead and give our guests a place to potentially like sit, but I am going to go ahead and give our guests a spot to come. Whoa, was that weird noise our lemurs? No way! The like, like no way was that our lemurs, that was so interesting. Uh, should we do coffee? Cosmic Cow, Pip Shot, Gulpy. Hmm. Let's see. Are people tired as well? No, they're just kind of. Nobody's really that tired. So I think we're going to do. Let's do some Cosmic Cow, but we're going to say this is like soy milks and almond milks and stuff, because plant milks seem to make more sense to me to have, you know, right next to a bunch of lemurs. And then I'm going to put down the pizza pen. I mean, as surreal as that seems, I'm going to put down the pizza pen. And this is not my idea of, like, the best thing to do to have a little vending machine section right here. But people are very thirsty. So maybe I will hide it under a tree. That That's kind of my, my MO, is, like, hiding things that I don't want people to really dwell on. Like, ah, oh, that doesn't look the nicest under a tree. Or apparently under bamboo. Bamboo might actually work. Like, bamboo is nice. You know what? That's actually kind of nice if I push it back a little. And then I rotate it just a touch. And then maybe push it back a little more. Alright, I can kind of live with this bamboo. Sort of, kind of hiding. The vending machines. Because the vending machines are not the most attractive things. But people are hungry. They're thirsty. Oh, we're about to have baby lemurs! Yay! And let's see, yeah, thirst is a big issue. So I think I will put in a few more vending machines. And we'll try to review how the guests are feeling. The animals are no longer dying off. <laughs> and like every two seconds, we just have an injured female who's hanging out with this other female. They are not stressed. Apparently their social group feels balanced enough. I'm very relieved about that. I think our vets are probably just exhausted. Yep, there we go. Our vet is coming. We have fixed this. I am so deeply relieved. I am going to make this happen, friends. <laughs> so that we'll be able to go ahead and have my husband come back and we can have a really fancy zoo. So let's see. Thirst is still a big deal. Let's review how our guests are feeling. So who's the unhappiest? Let's see. People who get all the way back here seem to really need to use the restroom or they're really tired. These guys are not very happy because they need to go to the restroom. These guys are getting a little tired. Yeah, this woman desperately needs the restroom. So let's try adding another restroom over here. We're going to make a little path for that so that people will wiggle back here behind our gigantic cupcake shop. 
because I that was a that was a sign of desperation. Like Chips and I will have to work together to adorably try to fix the chaos that I have made. Uh, but that's another thing that my beloved husband is learning about Planet Zoo is that sometimes you make a bit of a mess out of desperation to solve a problem, and then you have to go back <laughs> and you have to try to make it look a little bit decent. All right, there's one type of toilets. We could put the small toilets down. Or we could just straight up put the large toilets down. That might really be our best solution, except for space. So let's see, if I was gonna be able to have a spot <laughs> to put these down in this exceptionally limited area, obstructed by water volume, there we go. Am I gonna be able to pull this off? Okay, so we got that going for us, that's good. Oh, we did it! <laughs> We did it! Okay, wait, does it have, like, power? Yes, it has power! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna bring more people kind of wiggling down here so that they can go to the toilets. And while they do that, then we will also go ahead and put in somewhere for people to get a drink really quickly. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be grand. Oh, I wish it could be the really adorable, cute little... Um, maybe a coffee? You know what, why not? We're gonna put in a spot for people to just like grab a coffee on their way past here. Excellent, excellent. Because it seems the other thing that they really need slash want happens to be, um, let's do tropical and then let's do South America. There we go. Yeah, wow, we need a lot more people over here than I realized. If we have Brazil nut trees, we can add in too, which would be awesome. I actually have been getting some ethically sourced Brazil nuts. Uh, those Brazil nuts are one of the best sources of selenium that exist in the world. And selenium is very important for a lot of your vitamin absorption. So I have been getting some Brazil nuts and Brazil nuts, you really want to make sure they're ethically sourced because they can only really grow in very, very wild jungle areas. They're not something that you can just grow uh, kind of like almond trees where you can get those nuts or peanuts, which are peanut fields, uh, which are really kind of a legume, but that's, that's, that's just my botany nerding out stuff muttering there. Uh, but you want to make sure, so, sure that you are ethically sourcing your Brazil nuts because they can only really grow in thick, established, very old jungly areas from these gigantic trees. And if you just get really cheap Brazil nuts, you might end up with places who source them by going in and like killing the wildlife and the trees around there and not sustainably harvesting. So that's why you want to even look into, into those kinds of things really carefully. All right, so let's come in. Oh, I kind of like the idea of putting in this big vine and just having like a vine go over the little coffee shop. And then eventually we can come in and we could put a little cute, um, let's see, will that do? That will do. We could put in a cute little awning that could go over. Oh, I totally missed that. I thought that was... Oh, it rotated automatically. I see. And then if I rotate it like so... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, this worked out a lot better in my head than it is in actuality. Just saying. Turns out wiggling a vine like this is very hard. Alright, fine. I'm not going to swing from the vines like... A lady Tarzan. I will accept my fate there. Let's see if I can rotate it like this. Close enough? Almost. I think I could, I could do a little better. Oh. Yay! Alright, that's not bad. I need to do a lot more, but that is actually not bad. Oh, who is feeding children coffee? I have a lot of questions about that. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to request a mechanic to repair that. All right, so we have prevented all of the animals from dying, which is really, really great if you ask me. Uh, I think we definitely need to work on maybe getting education up, but let's review how we could help our guests the most. At the moment, 
taking care of their immense thirst, which I think is actually stemming from the fact that it is very, very, very hot here, is definitely a great idea. Uh, oh, and no gift shops, what? <laughs> All right, so cooling them off and then making sure that they have uh, ATMs and gift shops. <gasps> Ooh, now we're getting fancy. All right, adding in some of the fancy and then, of course, adding in some more animals should definitely be on our list. So, you guys, we're doing it. We're going to spruce this place up and hopefully move us to a great location and get chips like hanging out with us all over again. This is going to be really fun. I think, you know what? I might even try expanding back here and adding in. <gasps> what if I put in the platypus? Yes! Oh my gosh, one of these things is about to become a platypus house. Maybe this one. Oh my goodness, I think I'm gonna make this one into like a platypus house. It might be a little big for that, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. But all right, thank you guys so much for joining me on this big adventure. If you guys could, do please leave a like for saving all the animals. <laughs> I am so glad that we no longer need to worry about them all dying. Oh, thank goodness. And if you would like to join me on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, oh, Felicia. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.